So yeah, pen and pencil, and uh, enjoying pencil, not enjoying pen. That's not going to make any sense at all. Hello all, uh, welcome to a video that hopefully looks a bit better than my previous videos. Not because of me, I highly doubt I look any better than previously, but sort of just generally because I'm using a 25mm f1.4 Leica Lumix collaboration lens. It's a lens that's a few years old, I've always wanted to get my hands on one and finally I have and I'm looking forward to going and shooting with it at some point soon. It won't be today because the weather is awful. Uh, this video is sponsored by Lumix, I also am looking forward to testing another lens, this tiny little 15mm f1.7, again like a Lumix collaboration lens and uh, yeah can't wait to try these that's not what this video is about today this video today is about uh, what's this video about yes traps photography traps kind of psychological unconscious traps that you can fall into as a photographer that I have fallen into in the past and uh, hopefully by telling you about them perhaps you're you're less likely to also as you might be able to tell I've had three coffees this morning and if you've watched this channel for a while you'll know that I don't deal well with caffeine I didn't mean to have three coffees two of them were meant to be decaf I didn't read the packaging right so trap number one to avoid is worrying too much about what your photos look like which I appreciate is a strange thing to say because I've made countless videos about trying to make your photos look better. The thing is though, uh, things like colour theory and composition, those things are kind of almost nice to have as far as photos go. They can make good photos look better but they can't make bad photos good. And the most important thing for a good photo is having a story, having something that can pull people into the image. Somebody once said to me, I can't remember who it was, but they said something along the lines of the fact that when a book wins an award, it's rarely the case that it wins it for a nice font or a colourful front cover. Typically, a book wins an award because it's got an amazing story. And I think, to some extent, that is true of photography and photos too. And so a good way, I think, to, to make you wonder whether or not a photo that you're looking at has story is do you have questions about it? And not questions like, I wonder what focal length that was shot on or I wonder what aperture they used. Questions about what's happening in the photo. If you do, chances are you're looking at something that's kind of pulling you in a bit more than something with just pretty colours. And uh, that is a good starting point for a good or a great image. And that's kind of what I try and strive for with my photos. And I rarely succeed, but that's certainly what I'm aiming for. Trap number two is shooting for likes. So I don't know about you, but there have been times uh, for me in the past where I have got better than expected feedback for something that I've done. Not just in photography, like in, you know, in my geography homework, for example, I might have got a better mark than I thought I would. And it's a really, really nice feeling. And typically, as humans, I think we want to do stuff that we enjoy but we also enjoy doing stuff that we're good at. And what that means is that there's a kind of paradox and ultimately we can end up doing stuff that we don't particularly enjoy doing just for the positive reinforcement of doing it and all the, all the great feedback that we get and uh, all the dopamine hits that we get from the likes and the comments and all that kind of stuff. And what I'm trying to get at here is that quite often in photography you can end up taking photos that you didn't particularly enjoy making all simply to please other people and that is not a recipe for long-term success and enjoyment, I don't think. Uh, I don't know if I'm making sense, so I shall try and show you with a brilliant example that I've just thought of. Let's say that I uh, love drawing in pencil. I live for drawing absolute masterpieces in pencil. And let's also say that I absolutely despise drawing in pen. However, somebody sees my masterpiece that I drew with a pen and gives me lots of compliments for it, uh, shows it to lots of other people who also give me great feedback, and all of a sudden I might start questioning whether or not I should be drawing in pen, despite the fact that I hate it, because I just love positive feedback. That can happen with photography and uh, it's something to watch out for, particularly in an age where it's never been easier to show other people your work because it's also never been easier for other people to then influence your work. So basically shoot what you enjoy shooting, shoot for yourself and not because of the feedback 
of others. That is much more likely to lead to your actual enjoyment of stuff and therefore your best work, regardless of how many other people give you initial good feedback for it. Uh, trap number three is not choosing the right focal lengths. I say the right focal lengths, photography is an art, there's no right or wrong, it's all down to personal preference. But I think sometimes people could get better results by choosing different focal lengths. Now the trouble is for me with this is that I have quoted at least thrice I reckon on this channel quotes such as if your photo's not good enough you're not close enough which a lot of the time is true you know if you have a, a big wide vista and lots of distractions and it's not particularly clear what your subject is then that can lead to confusion for the viewer and just a bit of a, a messy photo and in that instance you would absolutely benefit from being closer to your subject or using a longer focal length to appear closer to your subject. The trouble with that is that sometimes you can be way too close to your subject. So for example, with this image that I got in Greenland last year, probably my favorite photo of last year, had I cropped it like this, so basically just the subject, then I've not given it any room to breathe. I've not given it any context any story. As it happened, I shot it like this, and by doing so, I gave it context. So I included a bit of the sky, because the sky was on fire, so, I mean, why would you not? Uh, I included the mountain so that you could see the snow just being shoved off by the force of the wind, and all of that stuff gives the viewer the story. And uh, if you don't include some of that stuff, then you lose story. And as I said at the start, the story is the most important thing. So uh, yeah, basically my, my ethos with choosing a focal length is I want to have uh, the longest focal length I can while still maintaining story. And trap number four is something that I've spoken about a little bit before in another video I did about not buying other people's presets. And basically it's not learning to edit properly. Now in that video I did about presets, I didn't take account of the fact that there were plenty of people in the comments who came back to me with a good point, which is you can buy presets to learn from them, to learn what the settings are, why certain things are a certain way, and then take those into your own editing process. I completely get that. That is a very good reason to buy someone else's presets. But all too often I think people use presets as like a one-click solution, a one-stop shop to making your images look nicer. And I think it's a massive missed opportunity. There are three parts to uh, photography, and um, uh, don't worry, it's not more stick men, but it's, it's pre-production, production and post-production. I think all too often people think a lot about production, but not so much about pre-production and definitely not so much about post-production. Editing is an incredible way to improve your photos and to improve your storytelling. And if you don't learn how to edit properly, you're missing a massive opportunity to really stamp your authority on your vision for your photos and ultimately your stories. So yeah, spending time learning to edit I think is a really worthwhile investment and uh, something that people miss a fair bit. And a bonus trap, no one's ever said that before, a bonus trap is not taking enough photos. Now I've uh, spent time with beginners, photography beginners, and I've spent days kind of in the mountains with beginners, and throughout the course of the day, they'll raise their camera to their eye maybe a half a dozen, a dozen times, and then at the end of the day, they'll wonder why they haven't got any images they like. And it's quite simple really, they've not taken anywhere near enough photos. And when I go out shooting uh, either commercially or for myself, typically I'll take hundreds of photos in a day, and I'll have maybe three or four that I'm happy with. And one of the biggest secrets in photography is just how many images you need to take in order to get stuff that you're happy with. And I think in many cases, you'd be surprised how many photos your favorite photographers have had to take to get the ones that they're known for. And there are some exceptions, so lots of uh, kind of landscape kinds of photographers, they like to go out and just take one or two images of a day, but they've had years of practice doing that, and that's just how they like to work. It's certainly not how I work. I like to take ridiculous numbers of images, and it's only really a tiny percentage that I think make the cut. And I think that's the case for most photographers. So ultimately, you need to take a lot more images in order to get a lot more keepers. So yeah, that's that, photography traps. Hopefully that was useful. I'm sure these weren't, but, uh, but there we go. Uh, one last thing, I'm speaking at the photography show on Tuesday the... I'll put it in the description, what day. Basically the photography show runs from Saturday to Tuesday, sometime in March. I'm there on the Tuesday, I can't be there for any of the other days, but there's a link in the description for 20% off tickets. So if you can make it, I'd love to see you there. I'm talking on the Lumix stand, I think in the morning, and I'm talking on the social stage 
in the afternoon, maybe. But uh, yeah, details in the description. So hopefully see some of you there. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I am gonna go and have a lie down, I think, because that coffee has absolutely knocked me for six. Whew.